Hey guys, today we are going to go over how to approach and solve lac operon problems like the one you see here. To start, we need to first review all of the components of the lac operon and their corresponding mutations. As we review each component, I want you to create a toolkit that you can use when you attempt lac operon problems in the future. Here's an example of what your toolkit may look like. As a tip, try to write only one sentence per bullet point. So as we go through the following section, please pause the video as needed to write down the key takeaways. For now though, go ahead and pause the video to create the outline for your toolkit. The first part of the operon that we will go over are the structural genes, LACZ and LACY. The structural genes will be transcribed and eventually translated into the proteins that break down lactose. LACZ is a gene that eventually produces the protein B-galactosidase and LACY will eventually produce permease. Here are the mutations for LACZ and LACY. These mutations cause the structural genes to not be able to produce their respective proteins. Now let's move on to the promoter. The promoter is where RNA polymerase binds so that it can transcribe the structural genes. This is a mutated promoter, LACP negative. The LACP negative mutation means that RNA polymerase will never be able to bind to the promoter. If RNA polymerase can't bind to the promoter, then it can't transcribe the structural genes. Next, we have the regulator, which controls transcription of the LAC operon by binding to the operator. When there is no lactose present, the regulator is always bound to the operator. This blocks RNA polymerase from being able to transcribe the structural genes, so no transcription occurs. When there's lactose present in the bacteria, then we know that allolactose will bind with the regulator. This causes the regulator protein to let go of the operator, and when this happens, RNA polymerase can then bind to the promoter and transcribe the structural genes. The first mutation of the regulator is LAC-I negative. This mutation prevents the regulator from binding to the operator as the regulator's binding site for the operator is messed up. Because the regulator cannot bind to the operator, this allows RNA polymerase to bind with the promoter and transcribe the structural genes. The second mutation of the regulator is a supermutation. This mutation causes the regulator to never let go of the operator because the regulator no longer responds to allolactose. Because supermutated regulators are always bound to the operator, they will always block RNA polymerase from being able to transcribe the structural genes. Finally, we have the operator. As mentioned earlier, the operator is where the regulator protein binds to. Here is the mutated operator, and this mutation prevents the regulator protein from binding to the operator. What is important to note is that both the mutated and wild type regulators can never bind to a mutated operator. This is because the operator's binding site for regulators is too messed up for the regulators to secure themselves to. If no regulator can bind to the operator, then RNA polymerase is always going to be able to bind to the promoter and transcribe the structural genes. Now let's return to the problem from the start of the video. When we see these problems, we first need to understand what the problem even is. These problems represent a scenario where you have injected two operons containing different mutations into a single bacteria cell. I like to frame these problems by asking myself, how do these mutations affect the bacteria's overall ability to produce the enzymes that break down lactose? When we are dealing with these types of problems, we have to remember that certain components of the LAC operon are cisacting and transacting. Everything except the regulator is cisacting. This means that the function of the wild type or mutated forms of the promoter, the operator, or the structural genes only affects the operon that they are specifically a part of. On the other hand, the regulator is the only transacting component, so it can affect both operons in the problem. What determines this transacting behavior is the dominance pattern of the LAC regulator forms. A supermutation is dominant to the wild type, which is dominant to LAC I negative. For example, let's say that a blue regulator had the wild type phenotype and the orange regulator had the supermutation. In this scenario, the orange regulator would be able to bind to both the blue wild type operator and the orange wild type operator, effectively controlling the regulation of both operons. 
Here, we are going to start solving the problem from the beginning of the video, step by step. By now, we have covered all the information needed for your toolkit. Please feel free to pause the video to refer to it as we work through this problem. So the first step towards solving this problem is by looking at how each operon is regulated. Let's start with looking at the blue operon, specifically the blue operator and the blue regulator. The blue operon has a wild type operator. However, the blue regulator is lac I negative. So we can recall that this regulator will never be able to bind to any operator. When thinking back to the transacting properties of lac I, we can now look at the regulator of the orange operon. The orange regulator is the wild type form. And since the wild type is dominant to lac I negative, the orange regulator can bind to the blue operator and control the blue operon. Because the orange regulator controls the blue operon, then we can say that for now, the blue operon is regulated normally. Now let's just focus on the orange operon. We know that the orange operon has a wild type regulator. However, the orange operator is mutated. So the regulator is not able to bind here. Because of the operator mutation, we can say that for now, transcription of the orange operon will always occur because it is unable to be regulated. Now that we have a sense about how each operon is regulated, the next step is to figure out whether transcription will actually occur on each operon. To do this, we are going to look at each operon's promoters. Let's start with the blue operon. The blue promoter has the wild type phenotype, so we know that the blue operon can transcribe its structural genes. Now looking at the orange operon, we see that it has a mutated promoter. So we know that the orange operon structural genes will not be transcribed. Remember in the previous step, we said that the orange operon cannot be regulated. However, the regulation of this operon doesn't really matter anymore because of the fact that it cannot transcribe its structural genes. The last major thing to determine is whether the structural genes on each operon are mutated or not. For this problem, we only need to look at the blue operon because we know that it is the only operon with a working promoter. With lac Z, we see that it has the wild type form. However, lac Y is mutated, so we know that it can't produce permease. The final step with this problem is synthesizing all the conclusions we have made so far about each operon to determine whether the bacteria is able to produce B. galactosidase and permease when lactose is present and absent. Let's start with reviewing the orange operon. We have determined that this operon cannot actually transcribe any of its structural genes. So this means that the production of B. galactosidase and permease is dependent on the blue operon. Now looking back at the blue operon, we know that it can transcribe its structural genes. However, lac Y is mutated. So in this problem, the bacteria is never going to be able to produce permease. Again, we know that lac Z can be transcribed. And we also found that the blue operon is regulated normally. So we can now determine that when lactose is present, there should be the production of B-galactosidase. When lactose is absent, there should not be any B-galactosidase produced. And with that, the problem is now solved. Now that you have your toolkit and we have walked through an example of a lac operon problem, the rest of the video will just contain additional practice problems. For each problem, I suggest pausing the video writing it down on paper, and solving it step by step while using your toolkit for assistance. Once you have attempted the problem, then unpause the video to see the solution.